Hello, in this video we will show our technique for discoid lateral meniscus saucerization and treatment of intrasubstance degeneration through an accessory medial portal using a small arthroscope. The case starts with the patient positioned for standard knee arthroscopy per surgeon preference. Our preference is to perform the surgery under tourniquet control with the patient positioned supine with the leg and figure of four position to allow increased access to the lateral compartment. Diagnostic arthroscopy is carried out using a standard anterior lateral viewing portal using a small 1.9 mm zero degree arthroscope. This smaller arthroscope has an easier time getting between the femoral condyle and the superior surface of the meniscus to improve visualization as seen in these images of the medial compartment. A standard anterior medial working portal is used for probing and instrumentation. The lateral discoid meniscus is then assessed for any peripheral instability or tearing using a probe. If there is any intrasubstance degeneration, it will not typically be encountered at this time as it is usually located peripherally and the superior surface of the meniscus will often look normal. Using a standard arthroscopic punch or a small arthroscopic punch as well as an arthroscopic shaver, the saucerization is carried out in standard fashion. As a general rule, the saucerization is complete once 8 to 10 millimeters of peripheral meniscal tissue remains for adolescent and adult patients and 6 to 7 millimeters remains in pediatric patients. In this clip, we are viewing from the anterior lateral portal and working through a standard anterior medial portal. Sometimes the anterior horn tissue will be difficult to resect with a biter and an 11 blade scalpel can be introduced through the anterior medial portal to assist in resection. After completion of the saucerization, the arthroscope is placed through the anterior medial portal and the free edge of the meniscus is probed for intrasubstance degeneration. The location of the intrasubstance degeneration is typically in the body with variable extension into the anterior and posterior horns. At this point, the leaflets are assessed for feasibility of repair as well as thickness. An arthroscopic shaver is used to assess tissue quality and to breed any loose cartilage around the tear. Next, an accessory far medial portal is established just anterior to the medial femoral condyle under spinal needle guidance. This allows perpendicular access to the more anterior aspect of the meniscus and intersubstance tear. Using an all-inside meniscal-based repair device, approximation and compression of the two leaflets is commenced through the accessory portal with the small arthroscope viewing from the anterior medial portal. Starting anteriorly, a single passive suture is placed through the more peripheral aspect of the tear to ensure complete closure, and the suture is tied in a 360-degree compression or hay bale fashion. Non-absorbable suture between 0 and 2O is ideal for all inside meniscal base repair. Our preference is to use small 0.9 mm suture tape for more broad compression. Sutures are typically placed 4 to 5 mm apart from each other. One way to judge the spacing is to place the edge of the repair device next to the previous knot before firing the next suture. As the repair proceeds posteriorly, the repair device can be switched from the accessory medial portal to the standard anterior medial portal for a better trajectory. The arthroscope correspondingly is placed in the anterior lateral portal. Here is the view of our final construct from both the anterior lateral portal and anterior medial portal. After completion of the repair, marrow venting is routinely performed as a biologic augment. We prefer to introduce a 0.62 K wire percutaneously into the non-chondral portion of the medial femoral condyle. This approach allows for a superior number of vents to be placed compared to the intercondylar notch. We routinely create 10 to 15 venting sites. Postoperatively, the patient is allowed to weight bear as tolerated with full knee motion. Because all the fixation is contained within the meniscus and is not anchored on the capsule, normal meniscal translation during knee range of motion does not stress the repair. If rehab progresses smoothly, impact activities are typically resumed between three and six months after surgery.